A masse shot is where you jack up or elevate the back of the cue and use side spin to curve the cue ball's path to go around obstacles to pocket a ball, play safe by hiding behind another ball, escape a corner hook position, change the cue ball direction after collision for shape, force the cue ball up table for a breakout in shape, use with a kick to pocket a ball and get perfect shape, or even use with a jump to bend around an obstacle ball and get shape. In this video, I present everything you need to know to learn and master all aspects of small curve swerve shots and large curve masse shots. You won't need the techniques often, but when you do, they can win you games and matches, so it is important to develop the skill. In this section, I look at a collection of examples that deal with how to choose between swerve, masse, jump, and kick shots, and I cover some of the basics of how to execute them. Swerve shots are the ones you really need to master because they are reliable and can help you win games. With practice, they are very easy, and they don't involve much risk. All examples in this video are from the game of 8-ball, Shooting Stripes. Here, the 7 blocks a direct look at the 11, and I need to hold the cue ball for the 8 after the 11. The 6 blocks a straight kick. A jump is not a good option, since it is too difficult to hold the cue ball for shape on the 8. Going rail first also makes it tough to hold the cue ball. Side spin improves the angle, but makes the cue ball run even more. A slow, small angle swerve shot is the right play. As in all my videos, when important or when not obvious, I show tip diagrams that indicate the tip contact point on the cue ball from the shooter's perspective. For example, here the tip is aiming to apply bottom right spin with a near level cue. Here the cue is elevated and the tip is hitting on the top of the cue ball, but bottom right spin is still being applied. To get swerve, the cue must be elevated and the cue ball curves in the side spin direction. Not much cue elevation is required here, and right spin is being used to curve the cue ball to my right around the 7. Here is a side view so you can clearly see how little cue elevation is required. Here is another game situation where a swerve shot can give you a win, in this case with a well played safety. I can't see my left side of the 11, but with a swerve to the left, I can get the hit I need to hide behind the 8. About all my opponent can do here is attempt to kick off both pocket points toward the 6 or 7. That was close, but most opponents will miss both balls and give you ball in hand for an easy win. If your opponent has practiced this type of shot before, they might get lucky. If they can pull this off, just say nice shot and thank them for teaching you a new trick. And next time, play an even better safety by freezing the cue ball to the back side of the 8 so your opponent can't even attempt a desperation kick off both pocket points. Sometimes, even when a small swerve shot is available, a jump can be easier and more reliable, especially if you have good jump shot technique. If you don't, check out my Everything You Need to Know About the Jump Shot video. As always, all resources I mention can be found via the links in the video description. The jump shot is an extremely important weapon in modern pool. Here, only a small jump is required to clear over the edge of the obstacle 6 ball. For shots like this, I often use my break cue instead of my jump cue to have a little better control, in this case to hit a stop shot on the 11. An even easier alternative is just to aim for the left side of the ball so stun is not required. A swerve shot is also a good option here. You just need to make sure you aim far enough outside the 6 so you don't hit it like this. Many people who have not put in the practice tend to elevate the cue more than they need to and over curve the cue ball like this. But with a good understanding of how to aim swerve and masse shots, which I will cover in detail later, this sort of shot is very easy to execute. Here's an example showing how and when to consider different options when your path to the object ball is blocked slightly. A straight rail first shot is the best option with a shot like this, but it is not available here. 
One option, especially if there were other balls blocking paths on the other side of the six, would be to masse around the left side of the ball like this. But this is not a good choice. A large curve masse shot like this is not easy to judge or execute, as evidenced by my scratch. Another option is to masse around the right side of the six to go straight at the eight. But there is no need to curve the cue ball that much. Here, a good choice is to just swerve the cue ball a small amount and go off the rail first. The shot is easy and a scratch is not a concern. If you have good jump shot technique, a rail first jump is also very easy, but the cue ball travels much more after the hit. If the 8 were here instead, a kick shot would be the best option, since the cue ball would come into the line necessary to pocket the 8. I'm using the modified 2 to 1 kick shot aiming system covered in my previous video. I am doing a 2 to 1 pivot relative to the 6 to 3 line and adding a small correction to go a bit longer to pocket the 8. That earns me the win. Here's a good example where all one and two rail kicks are blocked, and we need to consider other options. Again, if you have good jump shot technique, the shot is easy. If you instead plan to use swerve or masse with a shot like this, you do not want to come up short. It is actually better to overcurve the cue ball to take advantage of a much larger margin for error offered by the rail. If aiming to hit the rail first, you can come up well short of your line or go well beyond and still pocket the ball. Also, hitting the rail first will take away a possible scratch. Although, a scratch is still possible if you come up short of your target. By the way, to show you how difficult it is to masse with precision, here are all my attempts required for me to get the cue ball to scratch. Sometimes, when recording videos like this, it is more difficult to make the cue ball do what we don't want it to do. Isn't that a great example of a first world problem? Dr. Dave working hard to capture a bad shot to include in a video to show you what not to do? Again, sometimes it isn't easy to get the balls to do what you don't want them to do. My life is so hard. Before continuing, I want to recommend that if you plan to practice masse shots a lot, be sure to use a spare piece of cloth under the cue ball. Here's an example of what it will look like after many attempts. Masse shots do beat up the cloth. But with a spare piece under the cue ball, the marks and damage will occur on the spare piece and not on the table's cloth underneath. Here's the burn mark from the cue ball and a scuff mark from the tip. Again, there are no new marks on the table's cloth underneath. If you plan to practice a lot in one spot, tape the spare piece of cloth down so you don't need to keep moving it. Here are some examples of what your table's cloth will look like if you do lots of unprotected big masse shots like Trick Shot Star Venom. The cloth tears happen only when you execute extreme power masse shots with a highly elevated cue, especially if the cloth is not very tight, or if you use poor masse technique, which I cover next. There is no need to worry if you use a protective cloth under the cue ball. Now let's discuss some elements of equipment and technique. You don't really need a masse cue unless you are doing power masse trick shots, which are easier with a shorter, stiffer, and heavier cue with a bigger and softer tip, which can also take more abuse. I execute most of the shots in this video with a regular playing cue. You can use an open bridge to get a wide range of cue elevations. You can switch from a regular underhand stroke to a sidearm stroke as you elevate more. It can help to support your bridge on your leg with an open or a closed bridge. You can also sit on the rail and bridge from your hip or leg. For even longer bridge lengths for more power, and with highly elevated shots, you can brace your body against the table and bridge from your hip or torso. Or you can put your entire leg up on the rail or table. Notice how I get closer to the table as the cue is elevated and as I switch over to the sidearm stroke. When over a shot, always try to get your vision center directly over the cue and shot line. Here are some example shots, starting with a low cue elevation swerve shot with an open bridge. From more curve, I'm bridging from my knee with a closed bridge. Here, I'm bridging with my arm against my torso for a long stroke and more curve. And here, from my thigh for even more power. You can use a standard underhand American grip. 
or you can use a European overhand dart style grip with two fingers or three. Some people prefer the dart grip for finesse masse shots, but you should choose which grip you prefer based on comfort, accuracy, and consistency. The bridge hand must be as solid as possible so you can keep it still during the shot. Notice how I spread my fingers for maximum support, with the thumb as high as possible for more stroke length. You can also tuck the middle fingers under if that feels more stable. You can also use just two fingers, but it is not as stable. You can also turn your hand to increase stroke length more. It helps to have the index finger straight up from maximum height. During a stroke, make sure you keep your bridge, shoulder, head, and body as still as possible. If your bridge hand is not steady, you will not be effective. If you hit too far from the center of the cue ball, a miscue will result. Hitting too close to the center of the cue ball will also be ineffective. Also, don't be tentative, being afraid to stroke through the ball into the table. You need to drive through the ball with force if you want good masse action. Now let's look at various effects you need to consider and develop a feel for to be effective. First, if your cloth is old and not very slick, or if the cue ball is old and dirty, it can be much more difficult to execute large curve masse shots. The cue ball will lose more speed and spin when it is driven down into the table, and it will curve sooner. Although, with enough force, you can get it to work. Did you notice how early the cue ball curved before heading in a straight line? If you want to simulate new, slick cloth, you can polish the cue ball with a wax like turtle wax. The shot will require a little less effort and the curve will be delayed. And if you use more speed, you can easily create a very large and swooping turn. If you ever see big masse shots online where the cue ball seems to keep spinning and curving over very large distances, the cue ball is probably waxed and the cloth is probably new, slick, and clean. Although, even with perfect conditions, shots like this still require lots of skill and power. Now let's look at demonstrations of important effects, starting with how increasing cue elevation increases the amount of curve. I'm aiming all these shots right at the golf tee at the center of the foot rail. With a near level cue, there is very little swerve, and the cue ball heads to my right a little with left spin due to squirt or cue ball deflection. With a little cue elevation, the swerve almost exactly cancels the squirt at this speed and distance, sending the cue ball close to my target. And as I add more cue elevation, the cue ball curves more. For a given cue elevation and tip contact point, more speed delays the curve. Here is slow speed, medium speed, and fast speed. Adding backspin also delays the curve. Here's the shot with no backspin, and here with backspin using the same amount of side spin and cue elevation. Increasing the amount of side spin increases the amount of curve. Here is no side spin with the cue ball going straight. Here is the same cue elevation and aim, but now with half of maximum side spin. And here is maximum side spin. First thing you need to know about aiming swerve and masse shots is you need to aim beyond the obstacle ball to clear it, especially at slower speed where the curve happens sooner. If I aim to just barely clear the obstacle, I won't. To clear it, I need to aim well outside of the edge of the ball. Did you notice that the speed I used resulted in the apex or largest swing of the curve being right next to the obstacle? This is what you want to strive for since it requires the least curve and gives you the widest margin for error. With faster speed and backspin, the curve will be delayed, but you can still easily clear the obstacle and hit the target if you give the cue ball enough room to clear with enough spin. Did you see the safe clearance even with the apex of the turn occurring much later? Now let's look at a useful system for predicting how much the cue ball will curve with swerve or masse shots. It was originally discovered in the early 1800s by Coriolis, a famous mathematician and physicist. Coriolis found that a line through the cue ball resting point R and aim point A on the cloth predicts the final direction the cue ball will head after it is done curving. 
In other words, the final cue ball motion will theoretically be along a line parallel to the RA line. Due to non-ideal effects on an actual pool table, the line usually comes up a little short of the predicted direction, but we can account for this when we aim. I sometimes call the Coriolis system the bar method, since a tip hits at contact point B on the ball, with the cue aiming at point A on the cloth, through which we draw a line from ball resting point R to visualize the final cue ball direction. The system works just as well for small curve swerve shots as it does for large curve masse shots. Let's start with the swerve example illustrated here. I first visualize the final direction I want the cue ball to head after swerving around the obstacle 11. I project that direction to the cue ball and add a little extra angle to account for the real world effects. Then I choose a cue elevation and contact point on the right side of the cue ball since I need to swerve to the right. I just need to visualize the predicted line on the table through the base of the cue ball and aim the tip at a point on this line. With a straight stroke, the cue ball should head in the desired direction. Here it is at the table. Again, I need to curve the cue ball around the 11 to pocket the 8. I've marked the cue ball resting point with a pink donut. Again, I first visualize the desired direction into the 8 after the swerve. Then I parallel shift this line to the cue ball. I've removed the cue ball for now so you can see everything more clearly. Then I add a little extra angle. This defines the line on the table that I need to aim the tip at. I've marked the point at which the cue is pointing with the second pink donut. With a straight stroke at this point, I should get the amount of swerve I need to pocket the 8. As you can see, my tip was sent right at the donut. Here's a view from above. Again, the cue must be aimed at a point along the cue ball line. Here's another example, this time with a larger curve Masse shot. Again, you first visualize the desired final cue ball direction. Then parallel shift this line to the cue ball and add a little extra angle. Then aim at any point along that line. For more information about how the choice of point along the line, determined by the selected cue elevation and amount of spin, and the shot speed affect the cue ball path, see the articles and video at the link in the video description. Here is the Masse shot example at the table. Again, first visualize the desired final line to the target, parallel shift this to the cue ball, and add a small correction. Then aim the cue with left spin at any point along that line. Did you see my tip hit the donut? The donut even got crumpled up. Now, to be effective with the system, you still need to have a good understanding of and feel for all the effects in the previous section. So get to the table and start practicing everything. I thought it would be helpful to end with some additional swerve and masse shot examples, many from pro pool matches, so you can see how important and useful they are. Allison Fisher swerves around the 8 to pocket the pink 4. The next is from Chris Melling's famous 3 shot sequence. In my top 10 most famous shots video, I reproduced the sequence and managed to make the masse shot on the first attempt. It helped that I knew the Coriolis aiming system. Here, Corey Duell decides to masse off the 2 and rail to head up table to break out the 8-9 cluster and get shape on the 3. And here, he executes a skillful finesse masse to pocket the 1. Look oh, that. what a wow. shot Look from Corey shot. Duell. We thought that was going to be impossible. Efren Reyes is playing straight pool and the cue ball is frozen to the 14. He pockets the 14 with cue elevation to masse the cue ball after the collision to get shape on the other stripe close to the corner. Look at the cue ball, Danny. Jason Shaw executes a beautiful kick masse shot to pocket his last remaining stripe, also leaving perfect shape on the 8. Oh, oh my god. god. This oh guy's my sick. god. Ko Pin Yi is corner hooked, but a skillful swerve shot allows him to pocket the 8. Very nice. Oh, what a beautiful shot that was. Oh. It doesn't really get better than this. No. This was absolutely amazing. Here's a nice Masse safety by Polish player Fortunski. Yeah, beauty there. 
And here, Mike DeShane pockets the 6 in the side and hops over and around the 13 with Massey to break out the 4-11 cluster for shape on the 4. Here are two interesting examples from the video encyclopedia of 9-ball and 10-ball, or VENT, I created with Bob Jewett. Here, Bob is using what is called a PK shot to draw the cue ball back to the end cushion behind the 9 while sending the 7 up table. The cue elevation is required to draw the cue ball back enough without giving the 7 so much speed that it could come back down table. Also, with the cue ball so close to the cushion, the cue must be elevated to be able to draw the ball. That was well played. Bob needed to get either the cue ball or 7 to a cushion for the shot to be legal, but he got both to cushions. Here's a final example where I plan to thin the 4 across the table and back behind the blockers while also using Massé to break up the cluster up table. Here's another PK draw Massé shot to avoid a possible double hit and get shape on the 8 up table. Notice how I have my bridge hand pinky finger in my pocket and how I'm grabbing my pants with the other fingers and I have my leg against the table all for added stability. This shot is not as difficult as it might seem, but it does take a little practice if you haven't attempted it before. Here's an example of the stroke from the side. You can clearly see that the cue ball did not go forward more than expected due to the slight cut angle, so there is no double hit. Here's a final example where I would like to pocket the 8 for the win. All kick and direct swerve or masse shots are blocked or made very difficult by the nearby 5. About the only reasonable option is a jump masse shot. This type of shot is much easier than it might look. In fact, swerve often occurs with jump shots anytime the tip doesn't hit exactly on the vertical center line of the cue ball. If you have attempted jump shots before, you know what I mean. Here, I curve the cue ball much more than necessary and scratch. There is no need to curve the ball that much on this shot since I can go rail first with only slight swerve to easily get the win. I hope you now find swerve and masse shots less intimidating, and I hope you can add them to or improve them in your pool arsenal. Like anything in pool, you won't develop the skills and intuitive feel necessary unless you practice a lot. I recommend you first try each thing in this video one thing at a time. After getting comfortable with the basic technique stuff, try the different shots and effects I demonstrated. Bob Jewett and I also have some good Massé drills in Volume 4 of the Video Encyclopedia of Pool Practice, or VEP, if you want more to work on. Have fun with the shots, and good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.